understand that we have rights, but we understand something further. That it's not just about asserting that we have rights. We understand and recognize that the only way we're going to be able to realize our rights is through struggle. That no one's going to give us our rights. We understand that not only do we have to struggle for our rights, we have to create the conditions that allow us to be able to protect our rights. And what that suggests, my friends, is that when we talk about human rights, we talk about a struggle to shift power. We talk about the empowerment of the people most impacted by human rights violations. We talk about the need, the necessity, to build a new world. One time if you hear me. You have two times you won't write. You have three times if you're ready for an action plan to fight. The movement started with a meeting in Atlanta, Georgia, where several organizations got together and talked about, uh, and of course that with me was made possible by the U.S. Human Rights Network, but several organizations got together and they said, we're doing the same kind of work, we're engaging the same kind of struggles here, and we want to step this thing up. We want to not just deal with the public policy issues, in our cities and in our towns and our communities, but we want to deal with the structural issues of land and land relationships in the United States. And we do that by challenging those land relationships uh, by doing two things. One is the adversarial possession of land, that is moving people, uh, taking over vacant homes and vacant land and moving people into them. And the second is defending people from getting evicted from that land in the first place. And that was really the basis for which the Take Back the Land movement is founded and uh, the thing that really uh, hold the glue that holds all of these different groups together. Look at Luke, mm -hmm. we're on a point that um, Saladin made about uh, how human rights has actually expanded in a lot of ways in the last 10 years. And you see, if you look to the booklet, there's actually a lot mm -hmm. of human rights, human rights, human rights. But I think what's missing, and I think what's been trying to happen within the US Human Rights Network, is to build this people centered movement around human rights where because oftentimes human rights is interpreted and used in a very legal sense and even at the UN level and we've been struggling a lot how to make those UN spaces with all their legalese and with all their paper into action right because it's a tool but it, it's only a tool if you use it you, once you submit a UPR report or any other report if you don't use it on the ground in your community, it's useless. There's no reason to go to Geneva to do all that. And so I, I think that what we've been trying to talk through here is you, how do we use CERD, which is a tool that we have for racial justice? So the campaign is a, a group of, uh, uh, of over 35 social justice, human rights, civil liberties, civil rights, uh, human rights organizations. Uh, that came together right after the last election uh, to campaign for human rights reform in the United States. Uh, as, you, as many of you know, uh, there's been a growing human rights movement in the U.S. Uh, trying to um, uh, reclaim uh, uh, the uh, respect for human rights and using the human rights, international human rights, in the United States to advance social justice issues. 